This is a special presentation brought to you by the DAFMAP based on one of the lectures given by Harav Yohonasan Berger Schlita. Please check out our other videos and shiurim at www.thedafmap.com. Today's shiur will begin at the beginning of the Gemara that you find five lines from the top of Daf Mem Vov. However, before we begin the actual Gemara, I want to issue a clarification regarding a, uh, an explanation that we gave for the Pasuk that you find at the top of the Omid. This is a reference to the statement that the Kehanim make in the Eglo Arufa ceremony, and they say, Kaper l'amcho Yisrael asher podiso Hashem ve'altitein dam noki b'kerev amcho Yisrael. The expression, Al Titain Dam Noki Bekerev Amcho Yisrael, I recommend looking at the Targum Unklus on that, and we're looking at Posuk Ches, and in the Targum Unklus he says, Kwanai Emrun, the Kwanim will say, Kapar La Amcho Yisrael Di Frakto Hashem. We're dealing, of course, with a murder that had taken place, so please uh, atone or forgive the sin of this murder. The lo titain chovas dam zakai bego amoch Yisrael, and don't uh, allow this to be a uh, a source of, we'll say, of prosecution. This uh, spilled blood, this uh, the murder that had taken place, be a source of chova, uh, a source of liability for Am Yisrael. Viskaper lehon al demo, there should be a a uh, an atonement for this spilled blood. That's a well, a general explanation of what this pasuk is really saying, uh, and I think that that's a uh, an improvement on what we may have uh, um, alluded to or explained in our previous shiur. Let us now turn to the Gemara. In the Mishnah, we learned that an egla rufa is acceptable even if it has a blemish, and uh, we're going to now question that. Uh, the topic heading uh, that we've written on the side is as follows. Mum eno posel beglo. A blemish on the animal does not render it, uh, or does not disqualify it for serving as an eglo rufa. Uh, another point that will come in dis- under discussion is avoda haposeles. We're going to s- speak about uh, w- the working with an animal that disqualifies it. We have Be'eglon regarding the Egla Rufa and Pora Aduma, the red heifer. In both cases, working with those animals would have disqualified them. Let's turn to the Gemara. Contrary to what the Mishnah said, should, let it be that Mum, a blemish, would render the Egol, the, the calf, uh, disqualified, and we should arrive at that conclusion mikalvachomer through kalvachomer logic. Uma poro she'ein hashonim poislois bo mum poisel bo. The red heifer is not affected by age. In other words, there's no upper limit to how old the pora aduma could be to serve as a pora aduma. So age is not a factor, but mum. A blemish is a factor by the paraduma. Eglo shishonim post limba. With regard to the ego, it has to be within a year of age. And age is a factor by the ego. So we would say that by the ego, uh, it's a, we're dealing with a more restrictive realm in that, in so far as age is a disqualifying factor. Eno dinche mum post limba. All the more so. Then the, all the more so, therefore, that mum should disqualify it, as we saw by the pora, which was a relatively, we'll say, lenient realm, and yet mum passled, mum disqualified ego, which is a more restrictive realm, more homur realm. All the more so, mum should passel it. The Gemara responds, shiny hossum, the case of Pora is different. Yomakra, asher ein ba mum. And there's a limitation expression here. Ba mum posel. Only in it, in the Pora, does mum render it uh, un, uh, unusable. Avi ein mum posel be egla. And mum does not affect the egla, does not disqualify the egel. 
So we have, in effect, a. It might, we might have had a logic that we could have applied, but the Gzeira Sarkosov, the, the scriptural ruling, um, overrules the logic, and hence uh, Mum is limited as a disqualifying factor to Pora, not, ex, not a factor by the Egel. Elome Ato, well, if that be the case, that we are a darshaning that we're focusing on the bo expression, that, and, and it, it being a limitation, and as a result, uh, we're not going to <coughs> learn from it a kavachomer. Well, if that be the case, lo yehu shar avoidois poislois bo. When it comes to the poraduma, it should not be that uh, other work. Uh, elements besides the oil. The oil is the yoke that the Torah specifies. Uh, a yoke upon a pora aduma would would disqualify it. But besides that, it should be as follows: that other avodas, other um, it, work experiences, should not render the pora aduma puzzle. And yet, aloma omar rabbi yudah rabbi yudah marav hiniachale uda shel sakin psula. Why is it that Rav Yehuda says that if one placed a, a uh, an udo shel sakin, let's say an aguda, aguda is uh, are sakin or sacks, uh, bags that are tied together. If he put them on the back of the paraduma, it, even though it's not an oil, it's it's not related to a a yoke, it renders the paraduma disqualified. And the, the, we add another halach here, but it's, uh, we put it in brackets because it's irrelevant for the flow of the Gemara. Ube'eglo ad shetim shoch. With regard to an egel, the aguda shel sakin, the bunch of bags on its back won't render it uh, disqualified unless it actually walks with it. Tim shoch means draws it. But what we see here is that on the, you're telling me that the word bo is a limitation expression, why then do we say that by the Poraduma Shar Avodos render it disqualified when that should not be the case? We should say that only the oil, which is specified in the Torah, that disqualifies it, and other things don't. The Gemara answers shiny para the Alfinun Oil Oil May Egla. There is a Gzera Shava from which we derive Rav Yehuda Amarav's halacha, and that Gzei Roshava says that we learn from Egla, where Shar Avodos Pesel, and there the Pesel specifies Asher Lo Ubad Ba, and we transfer that information, or we replicate that information onto the case of Paraduma through the Gzei Roshava, resulting in Shar Avodos other things other than besides the yoke render the paraduma disqualified. The Gemara asks, "Eglonami uh, tesi el mipara." If there's a gzera shava working from the egel to the paraduma, let the gzera shava let the word comparison work in the other direction as well, from the paraduma to the egel. And just like by the Poraduma, Mum disqualifies, by the Egel, Mum, a blemish, should disqualify. The Gemara says, yeah, but we already answered that. Ha, mi eight, Rachmona, Ba. But we already had the limitation expression of Ba by the Poraduma, telling us that only by Poraduma does Mum disqualify. The Gemara asks, well, be Eglonami, Ksiv, Ba. You also, by the Egel, have the word Ba. Uh, if you look in Dvorim Perik Chof Aleph Posik Gimel, you will see that we've included that Posik on the side. And if you just carry this uh, train of thought all the way, it comes out, we'll say, Bo, by the Egel, Shara Vodos will disqualify, and not by the Bora. So we have the word Bo by Egel, by the Egla Rufa, which should, which should refute Rav Yehuda Omar Rav's conclusion. The Gemara answers that the word ba by the Egel has a different role. 
And we have a marking scheme and a topic heading on the side of the Gemara. We have a Nosei slash Mivne heading. The diamonds that you see as the Gemara unfolds are Mekoros, sources Sha'avoida Loi Poiselis Bekochim. That working with an animal doesn't render it disqualified from serving as a sacrifice. Gimel Mekoros Bepsukim Uma Mechadesh Kol Echad. We're going to see three scriptural sources. And the obvious question is, what do I need three sources for the same thing, unless each one has a new aspect to it? And that is what we will be preoccupied with till we get to the uh, second of the wide lines. So in the meantime, we have the word ball by Egel, and we're saying it has a role, he has a source of information from that ball, other than telling me that Shara Vodas are limited as a disqualifying factor to Egel, but rather, as we saw earlier, not only by Egel do Shara Vodas passel, but by, Egl, by Poraduma, the same is true. The Gemara explains, Hahu, the ball that you have by the Egel, mi limute kodshim de lo posla buhu avoda. In fact, Ba is a limitation expression, but it's excluding kotshim, sacrifices, from being disqualified from avodos, from uh, having uh, work done with the animal. And the result is, by egla rufa avoda poseles, ba, and not by kotshim. Without the posuk, I would have thought otherwise. Salka daita chamina, I would have thought Lacey Bekabachomer Megla that we should conclude that Avoda Yifsol it will will disqualify uh, by Kotchim through Kabachomer logic from Eglo. Uma Eglo Shein Mum Posel Ba Avoda Posel Ba. With regard to the Egel, blemishes do not disqualify it, but working with it does. Kotshem, which is more restrictive, Shemum Poiseles Bohen, blemishes do render it unfit, Eno Din Shavoda Poiseles Bohen, all the more so. Avoda should render it, the Kotshem sacrifices, as being disqualified if the animal had been worked with. Oh, so therefore the word Ba comes and says, don't follow that Kalvachomer logic. The Gemara now asks, do I really need a Pasuk to derail that logic? Would I really have thought to make that Kalvachomer equal a Mifrach? The Kalvachomer is inherently weak. It has an inherent undoing within it. Ma le'egla shekein shonim poslos ba. The Egel, if you want to know why... Avoda Pasel is ba. It's because it's sensitive to age. It can't be more than a year old. Therefore, uh, it uh, avoda is possible. But by kachim, the thinking is right now that uh, age is not a factor by uh, sacrificial animals, and therefore, it's, there's, there's no reason to think that uh, avoda would possible by kachim. So I don't really, need, I don't need the pasuk to come to that for that conclusion. The Gemara says. Is the, is the assumption that we made really true that within the realm of sacrifices age is not a factor? That's not true. There are korbonas that must be brought uh, 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 when the animal is a specific age and not above that age. And, and therefore... Uh, to suggest that the Egel is a more restrictive realm because of the age factor, that's simply not true. Ki itzterich kra, I need the ba word to teach me that avoda does not pass by kotchem, lahanach kotchem de pasla behu shonim. With regard to those sacrifices that are affected by age. If I didn't have the Pasuk, I would have made the Kavachomer, that by Egel, Mum doesn't passel, but Avoda does passel. By Kotshim, where Mum does passel, certainly Avoda would passel. The Gemara asks, uh, granted, uh, we, we established that we, we really do need a Pasuk to, uh, to, let's say, to undo the Kavachomer we could have made. And that posuk of Ba is going to serve as the source 
for Kachim that Avoda doesn't passel. Yeah, but there's another source for that. The Kachim, the Loposlebu Avoda, Mehocha Nafka. Is it learned from here from the Bo word? Mehosam Nafka. It's learned from a totally different source. A Posig in Vayuka Perechov Beis, Posigov Beis, that speaks about. Uh, the um, uh, blemishes that disqualify an animal. It says, Averis o Shovu Rochorutz, O Yabelis, O Gorov, O Yalefis. These are names, well, you don't, we don't have to translate each one of these different mumim, but each one of them is a, is a, a blemish. Lo Sakrivu Elo Lashem. These are not to be offered as sacrifices. And we infer. Ela i ato makriv, blemished animals are disqualified. Avol ato makriv kotchim shen evda bohen avoda. But animals that are blemish free, but and they simply were used for work purposes, they're okay. So we see from vayikrochav beis the heter, the acceptability of animals that were used for avoda for work. Purposes as serving as sacrifices. The Gemara says it's derich. I need the Ba source. In other words, relying on Vayikrochov Beis with this blemish pasuk wouldn't have been enough. Saka daita chamina without the Ba source. Had I just one, had I had just one source, Hani Mili. When is it that Avoda does not pasul? Hecha ovad ban Avodas heter. That's where the animal was used for permissible, acceptable um, uh, work. Avodas Isur. Let's say the animal, you have an animal and it was used for plowing on Shabbos. Or it was an animal used for plowing a vineyard in which Kilayim is growing. Or an animal was used uh, with a different variety animal together with it. That's like a, we call the Shor of a Hamor example. Uh, a, a, an ox, which is uh, an animal that would be fit as a sacrifice. To, it was used in plowing while tied together with a donkey, which is a Torah prohibition. That's an Avodas Isor. So I would have thought, Amal Litsuru, that an animal that was used in a prohibited type activity uh, would be disqualified as serving as a sacrifice. Tzricha, therefore I need the additional source to tell me that even though the animal was used in, for an Avodas Isur, a prohibited type activity, it still is okay. Avoda does not disqualify, even Avodas Isur. The Gemara asks for Honami, Mehochanafka. Well, there's a, there's still a third source. There's another source that deals with that, uh, uh, telling us that Avodas Isur does not disqualify the animal. And this is from the same chapter in Vayuka Perichov Beis. This is Posuk Chof Hey, and it says there in that same context of of Psukim that deal with Mumin. It says Umiyad ben Nechor lo sakrivu es lechem. Eloi keichem mikol ele. Mikol ele means from all of these. It's a pronoun referring to the mumim. And the Pesach is saying that from Ben Nechar don't offer to uh, the Almighty uh, a, a Baal mumim. When offering a uh, Ben Nechar as a Gentile's sacrifice in the Beis HaMikdash, do not offer a blemished animal. Even though uh, Goyim, Gentiles are allowed to offer sacrifices to the Almighty on personal altars, which is something Jews are not allowed to do. And when they do so, they're allowed to offer blemished animals on their personal altars. The Pasuk is saying that when the Gentile wants to offer a sacrifice in the Beis HaMikdash, it must be blemish-free. And we infer from this Pasuk, Eile, the blemished animals, But animals that were used for work purposes are okay. They qualify as sacrifices. So now I have a, a third source. What am I to do with this? It's Drich. I need the additional source. I would have thought that the whole heter, the whole permissibility of using animals that were used for work as sacrifices is if the work was done before the animal was sanctified, when it was chulin. Chulin means it was still mundane. If the animal was used for malacha, for avoda, after it was sanctified, which, by the way, is prohibited. 
I would have thought that using it for work purposes after it was already sanctified would disqualify it as a sacrifice. Tzricha. Therefore, I need the additional source to say that even under those circumstances, avoda does not possible. Avoda, work with the animal, does not render it unfit as a sacrifice. The Gemara at this point uh, goes back to quote what we saw above Rav Yudah Omar Rav's ruling regarding the Uda Shel Sak. And before we read the Gemara, we glance at the side. We have a topic heading which reads as follows. Eril and Shar Avodos Bepora Be'egla the, uh, the yoke which is featured in the Torah and other Avodos as they relate to the Poraduma and the Eglo Arufa. The Gemara will have a diyun b'shitas Rav Yudha Marav the Pora nifselas al yideh hanocha greda shel aguda shel sakim al gabo a discussion concerning that halacha where a Pora Duma is disqualified by the mere placing on its back a bunch of bags that were tied together an aguda shel sakim the Gemara Gufa Amar of Yudah Marav Hinia Chalea Uda Shel Sakin Psula Placing on the back of the animal a bunch of sakin sacks or bags uh, is a disqualifying action. Uve Eglo Ad Shetimshoch With regard to a calf upon whose back one placed a bunch of sacks, it won't be disqualified until it draws it. Mesve, notice we have a long question. The uh, Gemara presents a Teneg source which uh, which focuses on the uh, opens up with a pasuk by Por Aduma. Oil, ain li ella oil. Uh, I would think that only an oil, the a yoke placed on the Por Aduma will render it unfit. Shara vodus minan. From where do you know? Other work activities will also disqualify the red heifer from being used as the paraduma for uh, tahara purposes, for purification purposes. Amris kavachomer. We can apply kavachomer logic to conclude that sharavotos pasal disqualified by the paraduma. Uma eglo shein mum poiselbo. Sharavodos poslos ba the egel the eglarufa where blemishes do not disqualify it and yet other avodos do disqualify it. The pasuk actually says asher lo ubad ba the word ubad avoda. It must be an animal that wasn't used for avoda. So we see the egel which is a relatively lenient realm, insofar as the blemish doesn't disqualify it, but avodos do. Pora shemum posel ba. The pora, the red heifer, which is is disqualified, disqualified by a blemish, enodun, shishar avodos poslin ba. All the more so, other forms of work with it will render the, the pora duma unfit. Ve'im nafshoch lomar, and if you find this kalvachomer Week, I still have a source for Shara Vodos Pasling. Namar Khan oil, the Namar Lahalon oil. By the Pora, you see the word oil, and by the Egla Rufa, you see the word oil. A oil is a yoke. Ma Lahalon, just like by the Egel, it's not limited to the yoke. Shara Vodos Poslos Ba. Other work activities disqualify it. Af Khan Shara Vodos Poslos. So too by the Pora Duma, other Avodos Pasl. Now, we noted before we're in the middle of a long question. We haven't seen any question yet. We simply have read a source that indicates that Shara Vodos pasal by the Pora Aduma. And, and that's derived, in, 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 at the end of the day, it's derived through a Gezeira Shava. There's a bracketed section, which we will initially skip. Within the brackets, I can tell you, uh, we have a note on the side, we, we can read the note together, the starred note, so grayim l'shem diluk, these brackets are for skipping purposes, da'chrem nimsa ikra kusha. Right after the brackets, we're going to get to the heart of the question, the main question, our rebut al marav. Besocha so grayim, within the brackets, ha'gmor meva'eris, mai v'im nafshech loimar. Why was it necessary to present an alternative source 
What was weak in the Kalvachomer logic that was presented? That's the topic within the brackets. However, after the brackets, we raise the question. What was reviewed on Marav's halacha? That the mere placing of the Uda Shosakin, the uh, cl- cluster of bags on the Poraduma's back, disqualifies it. The mere placing even without it drawing it, even without it walking with it. Well, we now ask the question, we skip the brackets. Let's look at the, your place of origin. In other words, you concluded by the Paraduma, as uh, the uh, Sakin will passel, from where? From the Egel. Well, Ma lahalon ad shetimshoch, afkan ad shetimshoch, by the, the, that which is derived can't be any more extreme than the source. The source of your information was the Egel. And by the Egel, the rule is Akshitimshoch, until it draws it. So to here by the Pora, the disqualifying element should be Akshitimshoch, until it draws it, until it walks with it. Why did uh, Rav Yudam Arav say that, it's, that the Pora is disqualified by the mere placing on its back even without it walking with it? So now this question is predicated on the assumption, uh, the reasonable assumption, that Pora is derived from Egel. If, however, I can demonstrate otherwise that Pora is derived from something other than the Egel, uh, then I can uh, legitimatize uh, Rav Yudam Arav's uh, halacha, his, his stringency that the mere placing on its back is enough to disqualify it. And that's what the Gemara will, in effect, answer. But before we go further, we go over the bracketed section. Ma'im nafshoch lomar. That phrase was in the Brisa, whereby after presenting a kalvachomer from Egel to Pora, teaching us that Shara Vodos passed by the Pora, we said if you don't like that kalvachomer, there's some, if you think there's a weakness to it, I have another source. Well, what's that? What's the weakness? My im nafshoch lomar. So here we go. The chitema ikol mifrach. You might say, well, there is a basis for weakening the kavachomer. The kavachomer was predicated on the uh, what's the assumption that Egel is a more lenient realm than Poraduma. Not so. Ma le'egla sheken shonim poslos ba. The Egel is sensitive to age. And age is a factor that could disqualify it. Not so by Pora. And therefore, Shara Vodos might be a disqualifying factor only there by the Egel, not by the Pora. Inami. Another weakness to the Kalvachomer is Kotshim Yochichu. In the Kalvachomer, we said, Egel, which is not disqualified by blemish, other avodas do disqualify it. Pora, which is disqualified by blemish, certainly Shara avodas should passel. So the Kavachomer comes to a head when you say that by the fact that Mum passels, then certainly other avodas will passel. Is that really true? Let Kotshim sacrifices in general disprove that. Shemum poser bohen, blemishes ruin, disqualify animals from serving as korbonos, and uh, working with them, as we saw in the sugi above, does not disqualify them. So, even though, by the Pora Mum passels, it might very well be that avodas do not passel. Oh, so am I going to stop there and, 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 and live with that conclusion that Avoda does not passel by Pora? So to that we say, Nemar Khan oil, the Nemar Lahalon oil. It says by the Egel oil and it says by the Pora Duma oil. Ma Lahalon by the Egel Shara Vodas, uh, uh, other Avodas uh, passel. Afkan, so to hear by the Pora, uh, Shara Vodas will passel. And we, uh, as we we learned this already before, we'll go over it again. Umi mokom shebasa. At this point, the Gemara uh, raises the question on Rav Yehuda Omar Rav. From where was Rav Yehuda Omar Rav coming? 
from where did he know that uh, Shara, that Shara Vodos, that, uh, the, uh, the, that the Pora is affected by Shara Vodos, is disqualified? He, came, he was coming from the Egel. Ma Lahalon, by the Egel, there, by the Egel, uh, regarding Shara Vodos, Ad Shittim Shoch, it doesn't become disqualified until it actually draws it. Afkan, by the Pora, Ad Shittim Shoch. Its disqualification should be based on its drawing of the Uda, Uda Shel Sakin. And not like you said that Hiniach, the mere placing on its back, is, is enough to disqualify. You can see that we've dashed, underlined, Ad Shem Tim Shoch in order for, to, let's say, to draw your attention to the previous dashed underlining where Rav Yudam Arav, on the third wide line, it's spoken of Hiniach, merely placing. Here we see not merely placing disqualifies, but actually drawing. And just to review again what we said before, and that is, this question is predicated on the assumption that Poraduma is derived insofar as work disqualification from Egel. Ah, Tanoihi. That issue is a Machlokes Tanoim. Uh, when you say a Machlokes Tanoim, you realize that that precedes chronologically Rav Yudom Arav. So Rav Yudom Arav can be, let's say, defended against this question by this answer. There is already a machlokas tanoim, diko de maisi lo egla. There are those that derive the disqualification of shara vodos by pora from the egel. And that we already saw. And that created the question. And iko de maisi lo mi gufo de pora. There are others that derive the disqualifying factor of shara vodos from the laws of pora itself. Oh, if it's from the laws of Pora itself, then we c- will be able to conclude that there will be a psul even without Ad Shetim Shochim, with just Hanocha, the Sanya. And here we have that source, that other Tanaic source. Uh, this uh, source opens with the Pesach from Pora, Oil, Ein Liela Oil. The Oil means the yoke. Shara Vodos, man, how do you know other Avodos by Pora? This is a posuk from Pora Aduma itself. And this posuk, when it says Mikomokom, it's including Shar Avod, it's not just the oil. And Rashi explains how the Chazal see this in the words. We can look together at the Rashi. Uh, toward the uh, the last, we'll say, quarter or so of the Rashi column, of the Rashi commentary, which is in the outside the Toysvis column, there are no Toysvis in on this parak. Talmud Loma, Asher Lo, Ola, Ola, Oil, Mikomokom, Dorish Le, Beloy Oil. He darshins the Posuk without, even though the Torah has the word Oil written in it, it's darshined, it's explained through the oral Torah, through the oral tradition, as if Oil is not there. Midolok siv asher lo ola ul oleha. It doesn't present the, the words in that order. Had it said asher lo ola ul oleha, then I would have been restricted to oil. Fesu hodok siv oil. In reality, the, the Pasuk puts the word oil after the word oleha. And it says, it says, Asher lo ola oleha. And then it says oil. The drosha kididarshina fi ozil. As we are darshaning it. So if you go back to the words of the Gemara, it said, the Pusik said, Asher lo ola oleha. And it, then the word oil appeared. You have a right to say, Asher lo ola oleha. On its own, without the word oil. Because of the fact that oil was placed later in the Pasuk. It wasn't placed earlier. So I have a right to read the words, Asher lo olo oleho, and then pause. And that would mean nothing was on its back. Not just a yoke, but anything on its back, just placed on its back, is enough to render it unfit. Which is what Rabbi Yehuda Amarav said. Well, if we're then expa- if we're expanding this uh, posuk to go way beyond the oil, so then what is the what do we gain by having that example in the posuk? So the Gemara answers the the Bryce answers oil poisel bein bishas avoida bein shelo bishas avoida. The placing of an oil on the animal's back 
uh, even without it drawing it, will render the animal unfit, the paraduma unfit, whether you're placing it on its back. Bishasavoda means in anticipation of the animal using the yoke for, we'll say, for plowing purposes. The yoke is a device that, it, that enables the animal to be attached to a plow. So you put it on the animal's back uh, a few minutes before your intent to use the animal for, uh, for uh, uh, we'll call it yoke purposes. Bein shalom bishasavoda, that means I put the yoke on the animal's back not because I had any intentions of using the yoke. Simply, I had a yoke in my hand. I was getting tired of carrying it. And I put it on the animal's back because that was a convenient place for me to rest, to put the yoke on its back to relieve my hands from their burden. So that in, with regard to putting something on the animal's back, does that result in instant disqualification? Well, if it's a yoke, yes. Shara Vodos comes to other things, other work, other things that you will that that, that, that might have use for some some kind of oh, oh, voda, ain poslos elobishasa voda. They will render the animal unfit only if you're placing it on the animal's back at the time that you want to use the item for its we'll say for its designed purpose. But if I was carrying a, a, a cluster of sacks of bags and I was getting tired and I put it on the animal's back just to relieve myself, that would not disqualify the para aduma. The Gemara asks a, the, uh, a question based on uh, a standard, we'll say, Xeris Akosov methodology, uh, hermeneutics. Fiema, why not say? As follows, Asher lo Allah Oleha equals cloud. That's a general statement. Oil equals prat. That's very specific. And when you have a posic structured like this, klal, uprat, a general, and then followed by a specific, ain bichlal elamashi prat. The, the uh, general law that will apply will be no greater, will be no more expansive than that which is indicated by the specific item. Oil in mediachrin alo, that only an oil will disqualify it, uh, not other things, not a cluster of bags. The Gemara responds, Asher, that word Asher that you see in the Pasuk, Ribui Hu, it has a special, we'll say, inclusionary powers. Vitanyo Nami Gabli Eglo Ki Hai Gavlan, with regard to the Egel, the Egel uh, Eglo Arufa, we have the same situation. Oil, only Ella oil, Shavodus Minayan, the Torah specifies oil by the Eglo Arufa, is it to be understood as just yoke and other activities not not a problem? Tamad Lomar Shelo Uban Ba, Mikol Mokom. In Cain, Ma Tamad, that means that any form of working with the animal will disqualify the Egel. Well, in Cain, Ma Tamad Lomar Oil, so why the need for specifying yoke? Oil poisel bain bishasa voida bain shalo bishasa voida. The oil has the, uh, we'll say the uh, stringency that it will disqualify whether it's the uh, the uh, calf is drawing it at the time that it's being used uh, uh, in its, uh, we'll say, designed work form, as a, as is as is the case in plowing, or even if it's. The it's drawing the yoke you put it on its back because you, you wanted to relieve yourself of, of the burden of carrying around the yokes you put it on its back and it started to walk with it Shara Vodos ain't postlos elo bishasa voda other items do not render the uh, the calf disqualified from being an egg la rufa uh, unless it's uh, it's drawing things at the time um, that it's designed for that work purpose and, uh, and in contrast to it, it uh, you're having placed it on its back simply to relieve yourself of the burden. V A Ma, and here the same style question as we saw just a moment before by the Para. Why not say Ashelo Ubad Ba Klal? The Egel is described as an animal that was never used for work, and that's a general statement. Oil equals Prat. Klal uprat in bechlal amashe beprat. When you have a general statement followed by a specific example, we say that all that's included in the resultant rule is that which is reflected by the example. Oil in midiachrino lo. The yoke, yes, that disqualifies other things. No. 
We answer Asher Ribui Hu. The word Asher uh, that appears in the Pesach is an inclusionary expression to include things beyond oil. Omar Rebbe Avo. Bo Minei Me Rabbi Yochanan. The Rabbi Avo reports to us that uh, I asked of Rabbi Yochanan, Meshichas Oil Bekamo. This is a question of distance. The Torah says that the Eglo, the Egel, a calf, will be disqualified if it draws a yoke, walks with it. How, how, what's the distance? Amale, Kemaloi Oil. Rabbi Yochanan answered. Kemaloi means the size of the oil. Ibayalah, when you say it walked the distance that's the size of the oil, the oil is an appurtenance that has a length dimension to it and has a width dimension to it, and they're different. It's not a square item. So, when you say Kemlo oil, do you mean Laorko in its length or according to its width, Lerochbo? Omar Luhu, Hahu, Mira Bonon, for Vyankiv Shmei, one of the Rabbis and his name was Rabbi Yankiv says the Ledi for Shemini Nader Rabbi Yochanan was explained to me by Rabbi Yochanan Meshichas Oil Lerochboy Tefach the disqualifying distance of the calf drawing the yoke would be if it walks a hand breath which is the width of the oil the Lema Tefach why couldn't he have said that Meshichas Oil Tefach, that the drawing of the oil disqualifies if it walks one hand breath with the oil on its back. Why, does he, why do you have to add the word L'Ruch Bo? Ha Komash Malon. When, by, by answering thusly, by saying L'Ruch Bo Tefach, we're telling you, Shi'ura de oil, the proper dimension of a yoke, Tefach Have. Its width is a Tefach. L'may Naf Gemina. What practical bearing does that information have for us? Lamekach Umemka for uh, purchases and sales of yokes. If you go into a shop and you, let's say, you order an artisan to make for you a yoke, what he produces for you had better be uh, a, a, a hand breath, a tefach in width. Otherwise, he doesn't deserve payment for his not having made a proper dimension oil. Omer Rabbi Yochanan ben Shol, Ipnei Ma Omer Torah Havi Eglo Benachal. Why does the Torah say that the the Eglo Arufa ceremony should take place in the Nachal? The Nachal, I've seen it translated as a ravine. It's a place that's not cultivated. What's the significance of bringing it to this uh, arid, um, uncultivated area? Omer Akodesh Baruch Hu, Yavo Dovar Shalo Asaperos. Let there come forth. An, 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 an entity that has not produced fruits. It's another way of referring to a young cow, a calf. A calf that's a, a year old uh, has, hasn't matured uh, to uh, the point that it could, that it could uh, produce offspring. So let this thing that hasn't produced offspring come, V-A-R-E-F, and have its neck broken, B'mokum Sheno Saperus, in a Nachal Eson, this, this is harsh ravine, hard ground area that's an unarable area an area that doesn't produce fruits and let it atone let it atone for for him who didn't allow fruits to be produced in other words a person was just murdered and we need atonement or partial atonement for the murder and in a, a, the result of a murder is this Iasias Peros, no more Peros. My Peros, what do you mean Peros in the context of the murder, the murder victim? If you're saying by the fact that the, that the individual was murdered, so there's no more procreation. That, that, so the Yegla Rufa represents a, um, the, the, a, uh, a ceremony because now We've, we've, the, the murder has caused no more periviribia. Had there been no murder, there would have been procreation. Now that there's a murder, there's no more procreation. Well, Ella Mayatawa, well, if you're going to follow that logic, if let's say the murder victim was anyway an elderly person or a castrated male who can't reproduce. So you're going to say that it wasn't the murder that stopped the Peros the reproduction, he couldn't have reproduced anyway, so there's not going to be any Egla Rufa. 
And that's absolutely not true. There's an Aglaru for, for any kind of, any person that was murdered. Elo mitzvos. When we say peros have been stopped by the murder, we mean the person's ability to perform mitzvos. And uh, while he was alive, a person could do a mitzvah. Now that he's been murdered, no more mitzvos. Those are the, the, the fruits of a person.